German Army Group B was deployed on the Northwest Front and was commanded by Field Marshal Walter Modell. Modell had the 15th and 7th Infantry Armies, the newly formed 1st Paratroop Army and 5th Panzer Army. Army Group G held the southern sector of the front, commanded by General Hermann Balk. Army Group G had 1st and 19th armies. Altogether, the two German army groups on the Western Front had six panzer divisions, along with ten independent panzer brigades, nine motorized infantry divisions, and 46 infantry and parachute divisions. By late September 1944, in the wake of the failure of Operation Market Garden, the Allies had been forced to realize that the war was not going to be won by the end of the year. Supplies were still a problem, and while the Allied armies were building up for the next major offensive, the generals had to decide whether to dig in and take up defensive positions for the winter, or maintain pressure on the Wehrmacht by relentless attacks. Already the weather had turned cold and wet, but Allied commanders decided to give the Germans no breathing space. A limited offensive would be launched to push the front right up to the Siegfried line. At the same time, in order to open up the port of Antwerp, a concerted effort would be made to clear the remaining Germans from their island sanctuaries in the Scheldt estuary. It was units of the German 15th Army that continued to resist in the Scheldt estuary and along with dense German minefields, blocked Allied access to the port of Antwerp. On the 1st of October, the Canadian 1st Army attacked, with its main thrust towards the German stronghold on Beaverland. German resistance was determined, but by the 16th, Wurnsdrecht was captured, trapping the Germans on the peninsula. The Canadians cleared the northern coast of the mainland, but it took two more weeks to reach Goes and secure the peninsula. The Germans were forced to flee to Walcheren. On the 1st of November, the British Royal Air Force bombed Walcheren's dikes, flooding much of the island. The 1st Canadian Army then launched a powerful amphibious attack. It took a week of fierce fighting before Volkeren was in Allied hands. Only then could the task of sweeping the estuary for mines begin. By now, the Allied front was advancing towards the Siegfried Line. The line was defended by the German 7th Army in the north and the 1st and 5th Panzer and 19th Armies in the south. The British 2nd Army attacked north and southeast through the Peel Marshes, while the US 3rd Army began pushing through the heavily defended Saar region, with its right flank laying siege to Metz. As the 7th Army struck towards Strasbourg and the French attacked through Belfort, the US 1st and 9th Armies, pushing towards Aachen, entered the Hürtgen Forest, an area of more than 30 square miles. The intention was to capture the city and push on towards the Siegfried Line.
The drive through the Hertgen Forest in early October 1944 was supposed to be part of a limited offensive. What no one had expected was that it would turn into a major battle and one of the bloodiest yet fought by American troops. Once inside the Hertgen Forest, the Americans quickly found that the German first parachute army had strongly fortified every town and village in their path. Even worse, the West Wall ran right through the middle of the forest and its defences had been heavily reinforced. Nor could the Americans get help from their normally overwhelming air power. The forest was simply too dense for accurate bombing. The city of Aachen was the most strongly defended in the Hertgen Forest area and one of the Allies' main objectives. The Germans put up a determined fight, inflicting heavy casualties on the Americans. But on the 21st of October, Aachen fell. It was the first German city to be captured by the Allies. The grim battle in the Hertgen Forest continued for another three weeks until finally, in early December, 1st and 9th armies reached the banks of the River Rohr. The struggle to clear the Hertgen Forest had cost the two American armies 35,000 dead and wounded and reduced several divisions to tatters. Further south, Patton's 3rd Army had also faced stiff opposition, especially around Metz. The city eventually fell on the 18th of November. Just over a week later, 3rd Army began its assault on the Siegfried Line. By the first week of December, despite fierce German resistance, American men and armour were pouring through the breaches. While Third Army had been smashing its way through the Siegfried Line, the First French Army had secured the Belfort region and was steadily destroying the 19th German Army. On the 23rd of November, the US 7th Army had reached Strasbourg and the following day, the city fell to the French troops of the Army's 2nd Division. By now, the Scheldt estuary had been cleared of mines and the first Allied merchant ships had entered the port of Antwerp. In its first week of operations, the port handled more than 10,000 tonnes of supplies a day and the figure was rising fast. Allied commanders were now confident that their armies would soon be fully supplied and would be ready to launch a full-scale offensive against Germany early in the new year. In the drive to conquer the German homeland, the Allies would have to cross several major obstacles before they would even reach the River Rhine. With the Siegfried Line now breached in several places, the next great barrier was the River Rohr. Engineers using models of the Rohr and its surrounding countryside were already trying to predict for Allied planners what would happen if the Germans flooded the river and how the attacking forces might cope. As plans intended to deal with this and countless other contingencies were devised, the Allies were confident that all such obstacles could be overcome. What no one amongst the Allied commanders suspected was that the Germans were not going to wait passively for the great offensive to begin. Hundreds of thousands of American soldiers, expecting to sit out the winter in relative peace, were to be the victims of one of the most audacious counter-attacks in history.